So my name is Leo. I'm currently working at, as a software engineer intern at Red Hat, and I'm, I'm based in Toronto, Canada. And my work is doing the Knative event team maintainer, and Knative is part of uh, is one of the adopter for cloud events. Uh, yeah, so that's me. So for today's presentation, we're going to split to three different parts. The first part is cloud events. We will be going over uh, what is cloud events and share uh, by using some analogy and also share some updates from the community and then to mention the, what will be the next step and direction for the community. And the second section, we're going to go over X registry. We're going to introduce what it is by using a uh, package delivery example and then we're going to see are there, what are the problems there and how can X registry try to help to solve it. And then we're gonna see like some uh, code working practice, how X registry works, and then introducing a new tool that is to help to make the developer's life much more easier. And then if we have time, we'll go over some Q and A section. So first, what is cloud events? So in one word, cloud events is just like a spec that can be used to describe the events metadata in a common way so that everybody can understand the, uh, the events. So you can imagine that like a universal package delivery label so that all the different career services can understand that. So let's look at this example. So within each country, uh, we have different career services. Like in China, we have SF Express. And in Canada, there's the Canada Post. And imagine we wanted to send a package from China to Canada. So within China part, the package will be handled by SF Express for the domestic delivery. When it's leave China going to the international journey, it will be handled by the international career. So the labels for the package will be changed so that the DHL can understand in that case. When the package gets into Canada, the, the domestic routing for the package will be handled by Canada Post. So obviously the label will be changed to Canadian career label. So if there is like a universal label that all different career companies can understand, can use that to route the delivery package, then life will be much more easier. So there will be no need to change the label every time. So that's why I mentioned at the very beginning, cloud events can be like a magical universal label. So everybody can try to understand that and help with the events delivery. So this analogy applies to the cloud native workspace as well. So events can move between different cloud services. For example, if you wanted to send a message from cloud service one to service two, service one is using MQTT protocol and cloud service two is using Kafka. How can they talk with, with each other? So in this case, we'll need like middleware that's help with the translation between different protocols. What if there are more different cloud services that's using even more different uh, protocols, like service one is, is using MQTT, number two using HTTP, some of them using Kafka and NATS. So we need the middleware to be really smart. It's need to handle a lot of different cases, like when the event is different formats, with different schemas, and with different business logic. And having such like a smart middleware is really costly. And uh, we don't want to do that. So let's please take a closer look at here. So we have an event producer on the left, and we have an event consumer on the right. And uh, for example, in the event producer, uh, for example, in the website, you, after you click on some button uh, to submit an order, then the business logic will try to handle those, like for example, payment processing or something like that. And there's need like a middle, middle layer called custom glue that can help to translate the data in the business logic into the, uh, the format that the proto protocol can recognize. And then after the events got delivered by the protocol and reached to the event's consumer, there must have some another like custom glue that can translate back those, uh, that data to the, uh, to the data format that the event consumer's business logic can understand. So if we change to using cloud events library, things uh, get more easier. So business logic can directly convert the data into the cloud events and then make the events to be delivered 
as a cloud event format, so that both event consumer and event producer can understand the event. So as we can see here, after we use cloud events here, uh, there, won't, there won't be any issues with the protocol because cloud events act as like a translator in the middle that makes sure everybody can understand each other. Let's take a closer look into the cloud events in actions. So there are two different formats for cloud events. On the left side, you can see we have a binary mode uh, and here in the highlight section, there are some uh, cloud events attributes like spec version, which means which version of the spec in cloud events you're using. And we have different types of the events you can specify there. And also the source, where is this event coming from? And also the unique ID for the events. And they are all being uh, listed as the header of the HTTP request. And on the right side, there's a structure mode Basically, it's the same thing, but we are just putting all those call events attributes into the, uh, into the payload of the HTTP request. And we have like a delegated data field in there to contain the call events data. And as you can see on the yellow part, which, uh, which signifies the metadata for the call events, and those data is being used to help with the event delivery. And the orange part is the event's payload, and that contains the data and the content of the event. And for example, when cloud events is trying to flow between different cloud services, like pass by different broker, event brokers, uh, it doesn't need to care about the payload, the content of the events. It's what just using the metadata to do the filtering, and it won't read or end to process the content of the events. And that is one special part about cloud events. And recall to the analogy at the beginning, uh, cloud event is that magical, magical universal label that everybody can understand. And so uh, now let's share some updates about from the community. Uh, cloud events recently graduated. Um, if you, uh, you wanted to learn more, feel free to visit the website to read more about the graduation. Um, and also the, C, the new CSQL uh, spec goes to the version 1.0. And also at the same time, we released the uh, GoLand and Java SDK. Uh, in simple word, uh, is uh, CLSQ is trying to is an SQL like language to provide like a better way and a simple way to uh, to do the event filtering. You can scan the QR code to read more as well. And also, the Amazon Web Service Event Bridge now supports cloud events as well, and you can read for more information here. Too. And uh, this is more like for the next step regarding the cloud events. Uh, so in KubeCon, uh, uh, KubeCon San Diego in 2019, the working group decided to work on the event discovery and the subscription next. So that comes to the X registry, which is the next step for cloud events working group. So um, we're going to like divide it to to four parts. So first, we're going to understand the problems by using analogy, and then we'll see uh, how, X how the appearance of X, re X registry can solve the problem. And then we see some working progress, a uh, working practice like demos and uh, pictures there. And then uh, we conclude by introducing the X registry CLI. So imagine uh, we have like a factory in Hong Kong and that uh, a store in Toronto wanted to order something from this factory. So after the uh, Toronto store submit an order, the, the factory in Hong Kong need to send a package uh, to deliver the, the, the stuff that Toronto store ordered. So, and the packages need to pass different like checkpoint and scan points. So for example, when it's entered the checkpoints, it needs to be scanned. And when it's leave out the checkpoint, it also needs to be scanned. And at that point, the notification will be sent. Just like how you buy things on Amazon or on Taobao. Like you see on different checkpoints, uh, the, the, the package arrive at some, some, uh, somewhere and at some time. 
So when a package arrives and they leave the checkpoint, the notification will be sent. Like uh, it will be sent to the Cloudy Factory, telling that oh, uh, this package has already arrived at this checkpoint, so that the seller, the factory, knows that. And also, it will be sent to the customer side, telling them the live update of the package. And each checkpoint operates like, independently in different, different part of the world. And uh, there are also so many checkpoints there. So how can each checkpoint let the factory know that the package has arrived at their location? So what needs to be sent, and where should we send the message to? That's a that's a question. So take this an, as an example. When the package arrives at the checkpoint number three, the notification will be sent to Cloudy Factory's endpoint. That's uh, is this address specified here, the slash scan endpoint. And the message sent to the Toronto store will be to slash notify store. And what should be included in the message? Uh, the, the message sent to the Cloud Factory should include like, what, which checkpoint it is, and what is the package's ID, and when the timestamp, when it's got scanned, and the type. Is it like arriving package or departing package? And for the event sent to the customer, sent to the Toronto store, uh, basically we have the same schema here. Only the difference is we have one extra field that's who scanned the package. We wanted to know uh, who, who did the scan, which stuff, yeah. So here is a question. What should be contained in the events, and where should the event be sent to? And what types of the events are there? Like, is this like a factory events and or customer facing events, or is this like departing events or arriving events? So we kind of like need a like central like information hub that can maintain all this kind of information, and each checkpoints which is are independently operating can try to retrieve the information from there, and get the most least, most up to date information as well. So for example, in the Cloudy Factory to this endpoint, we can send the event type with uh, Cloudy HQ Factory Arrive events and also the Depart events. And in, the, in another endpoint, Notify Store, there are also another two types of events that we can send to, which is the Cloudy Headquarter Store Arrive and Store Depart. So here's come to what is the discovery. So what events are supposed to be used in specific contexts, like which event type we should use, and what are there any, what are the different available event types there? So we need the event def definition registry to help us to discover what events are out there, and what should they be look like, like what, what should be included in the message, that will be part of the schema. So we need somewhere that can retrieve this kind of information to help with the, build the events and where we can send the event or produce the event from, that comes to the endpoint registry. So here we're introducing the X registry, the new projects. Um, X registry have like a based core, um, core spec, and we can derive that from, uh, derive from the core spec to three different other categories like events register, event definition registry spec, schema registry spec, and endpoint registry spec. And also you are not, uh, we are not limited to these three, uh, three options. The users can build whatever they want based on the X registry core spec. So in our analogy, we have our cloudy Headquarter registry system, and in this system we have different. Th we have three registry here. And for example, when the checkpoint wanted to know um, what should be included in the message, it can simply just send the REST API request to the reg schema registry, and then the registry will get a response saying that oh, you need to send a package ID, the timestamp, and uh, the location of the checkpoint. When the checkpoint receives that response, it will know, okay, I have this information, and now I can try to prepare the call events. And so the schema registry can be used to store the schema information for the payloads in the groups. 
and it also support different versions. And uh, yeah, and the schema def definitions can be widely used for uh, can be widely used beyond the messaging and the events. For example, it can be used for uh, event serialization, deserialization, and also the verification. And as you can see here, uh, it's being divided to three different fields. Schema groups, which is the most top level field, the, uh, the attribute. And then we have a cloudyhq.factory, that is one of the schema here. And the name we have here. And uh, in the schemas, we have uh, the arrive, uh, arrive events, and we have different version that's telling what should be included in this event. And um, in the endpoint registry, we wanted to know like uh, what's uh, what can I send to this endpoint? For example, we wanted to know what can be sent to the slash scan endpoint. So we just the checkpoint will send the simply send the REST API request to the registry, and then registry will know that oh you can send this type of the events the factory dot arrive and the factory dot depart. And the format should be cloud events. And the full URL for the endpoint should be uh, api.cloudhq.io slash scan. And the protocol should be HTTP. So all the information needed will be included here. And the checkpoint will have all this in handy way. So that comes to the endpoint. Uh, as you can see here, um, we're defining the cloudhq.factory.http, and the usage will be producer, uh, which means here will be the source that's producing the events. And we have the config here to set up the protocols and uh, to telling the what the endpoint URLs are there. And the message group means what kind of the event type can be sent to these events. Uh, like here, cloudhq.factory type of events, events can be sent to this endpoint. And if we wanted to query the information about the event definition, uh, for example, we wanted to know about the factory.arrive events. So checkpoint will send the request to the registry, and we will get the schema URL, and we'll also know what would the, the format of the schema be, and the event type should be factory.arrive. So after the checkpoint have all this necessary information, it will be ready to um, send those notification to the correct destination. Uh, as you can see here, on the top level, we have the message group. And then we have the metadata that have different attributes to define uh, the definition for this message group. And that also links to the schema URL telling uh, which schema is corresponding to this event type, event definition. So here would, uh, would be the glimpse of the uh, X registry's course back. And here are some API access that can uh, X registry provided. You can easily query all the uh, uh, registries here and list the contents. Uh, and you can also try to manage by sending the post uh, put request to modify the content of the schema or modify the uh, other different resources here in the registry. And uh, so everything, all the event, all the registry definitions will be included. You can put all of them in one .c reg file, and uh, you can manage with your source code as well and inline everything. Um, and also, you can do something more even advanced by using X registry. Like you can do the. Uh, because it's more like a centralized information hub, you can do like the govern governance and also can use the versioning versioning feature as well. And that can help to your different organizations or different departments to increase the interreportabilities as well. And the X registry also have like a really cool tool that can make developers' life much more easier. It can automatically generate the code artifacts from the X registry registry's definition, especially the message catalog. So you can just use the one single one command, X registry generate, and uh, it will basically generate like the whole uh, library for you to use. And here's like a live uh, is a very short video demo. 
how X registry CLI works. Um, as you can see here, after you, uh, here is like our schema registries file, so which contains all the schema groups uh, and message groups and endpoints, as we mentioned at the begin uh, before. And then we're using this command, X registry CLI, to try to generate the library for our registry. And here you will be able to see that the new directory has been generated and uh, even include a readme file as well. Um, and all the functions here. Uh, and if you take a closer look here, all the functions like how to uh, send, send the events, all the helper functions are generated too. Um, oops. Yeah, so that is the uh, CLI video showcase. And, um, and here I prepare like a short uh, real world, like a use, uh, it's like a, a, our implementation for the Cloudy Factory here. And so, if you're interested, you can scan the QR code here and to see how uh, the Cloudy Factory analogy being implemented in the X registry work. And just to conclude today, as we go over the Cloud Events uh, definition and we introduce some. Uh, we, we help to understand the cloud events and we share some updates from the community. And uh, for the regist X registry, we introduce what it is and what is the pain point it is trying to solve. And we also sh see some uh, request code snippets from the X registry. And finally, we introduce the CI for X registry. So now I think that concludes to my presentations. And right now we can have some time for the Q&A. And thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And um, if you like, if, if you have like a question later in your mind, feel free to join the Slack community for uh, Call Events channel and X Registry channel. The maintainers there will be more than happy to help you.